In the last class, we learned that E1 eliminations are stereoselective because they tend to favor one stereoisomer over another. Trans alkenes are generally favored over cis alkenes. We also learned that it was regioselective because if different hydrogens adjacent to a carbocation lead to different alkene products, the more stable, more substituted double bond forms preferentially. The E2 elimination also tends to favor the production of the most stable product, the most substituted E alkene, when there's a choice. But with E2 eliminations, there are a few additional things to consider. Let's first think about regiochemistry, that is, where the double bond is formed, or which constitutional isomer is formed. For many substrates, there's no need to worry about this. Every proton on the adjacent carbons would give the same product, T-butyl chloride, or N-butyl chloride, for instance. But there is a difference for sec-butyl chloride. The more substituted double bond comes from the base acting over here, and the less substituted double bond comes from the base acting over here. Usually, the more substituted product is preferred but if we choose a very, very bulky base, we can shift the selectivity to the less substituted product. This is because the proton that leads to the more substituted product is more sterically encumbered. There's bigger stuff around it. And so the big bulky base has a harder time reaching that site. This is steric hindrance. The most common base for this purpose is potassium t-butoxide, but many other very bulky bases offer similar selectivity. An additional regiochemical consideration is that in the E2 reaction, the proton that is being removed must be anti- and periplanar to the leaving group. In cyclic structures, this requires that the H and the leaving group be on opposite faces of the ring. So this compound only undergoes elimination on the less substituted side because the more substituted side doesn't have a proton in the proper orientation. We also need to consider stereochemistry, the configuration of the double bond that is formed. In most cases, as I mentioned, the E or trans double bond is formed preferentially but only when there's a choice. If the forming double bond is in a ring, it must be cis. Trans double bonds are extremely unstable in a ring. There are also certain circumstances where the only available proton gives rise to a Z double bond. For instance, this compound has only one hydrogen adjacent to the leaving group, and in order to undergo E2 elimination, the H and the leaving group need to be anti- and periplanar. So let's rotate around the central CC bond so that we can see that conformation. Do you see that the two phenyl groups are both coming out of the plane of the screen, while the, the methyl group and the hydrogen are both pointed away from the screen? Because the new pi bond is forming in the plane of the screen, the two phenyl groups both end up on the same side of the alkene in the product. It's the Z alkene. But this particular substrate didn't have any other choice based on its structure. A reaction that produces only a single stereoisomer, depending on the specific configuration of the substrate, is said to be stereospecific. The E2 reaction in general is stereoselective, but certain examples are stereospecific if they have only one possible stereochemical outcome based on the particular configuration of the starting material.